introduce my very dear friend, Anna Bettina, who is from Happy Healthy Pup in Atlanta, Georgia. And Anna is um, my go-to person for um, nutrition questions, supplements, um, any holistic thing, um, essential oils, vitamins, all that kind of stuff. So I thought it would be fun to have her on. I've been trying to um, wrangle her into teaching a class for a while now. So maybe this will this be a little poke. Um, so this is Anna. I want a point where he would urinate or defecate. You know, if you if the ice maker rolled over in the freezer, you know, he lost it. You come in, you flip, flip on a light and the ceiling fan would come on and he'd lose it. Couldn't carry bags into the house. So he needed a lot of support emotionally. Um, and hold and on one second because they both, uh, I just had two people say that they could not hear you. Can you guys hear Anna now? Can you hear me now? Uh oh, it's okay. We can always just start over, not a big deal. Not okay. hearing Anna, still not hearing her, guys. Okay, so let me turn my my phone. says it's working. I'm turn my phone. You have your mic, I can hear you. So, um, okay. Inter default internet. Okay. Oh, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. You so everyone can hear you now. So oh, okay, that's so weird. Uh, okay. We're gonna sort of go Sorry. back because they didn't hear that part. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> so let's just start all over. This is okay. <laughs> okay. So now everybody can hear Anna. Okay, it's probably my thing because I'm, you know, this whole thing sort of the be live changed its studio so i'm still getting used to it so i'm gonna stop the recording or the stream for no i'm not i'm gonna start recording now that's what we're gonna do okay okay so going back to what we were just saying um tell them again sorry about tell them your background again let's just start yeah over. sure absolutely <laughs> so, um i'm anna from happy healthy pup in atlanta georgia I'm a certified dog trainer. I'm also certified in several holistic modalities. So, um, you know, herbs, flower essences, homeopathic remedies. I have been using holistic modalities with my dogs exclusively for about 18 years. So I've been really lucky in that I've had a lot of support. You know, I have, I, I basically have four veterinarians that are kind of on my team here. Um, one of them doesn't do any holistic. Um, and the other three have varying degrees of, of um, holistic modalities that they use. So luckily I've been able to be really supported in that. I have good vets here, but um, you know, what we were kind of discussing is that every dog is really an individual. And even though I've chosen to do everything holistically with my dogs, I'm like, this. <laughs> I'm the extreme <laughs> end of the spectrum. I'm as far yeah. as you can get that way. You can't go any further. You'll fall off the cliff. So yeah. Um, and I understand that everybody kind of has to do it, what works for them, what they're comfortable doing. And, you know, I mentioned support from my veterinarians because it's hard. If you live in an area where you don't have support, it's really right. hard to be able to keep those things up or even, you know, implement them with your dogs. You know, if you don't have someone who understands it or can really support you in it. So my big thing is, you know, yes, I would love for people to do things more holistically, but you don't have you don't have to be on the edge of the cliff with me. You can be somewhere in the middle where you're comfortable and where your dog's comfortable. And hopefully you'll be able to reap the benefits, you know, just by implementing a couple things that are a little bit more natural. Right. So what are some of the things like you, you talked, but I don't think they heard you before um, a little bit about you've used them really successfully with glaucus for skin issues, right? Yeah. And then also for Briscoe's liver stuff. That was, you used a lot of supplements and stuff with that, right? Yeah, wow. Can Brisco, you tell a little bit about that? Uh, so Glaucus is my sixth Neapolitan. Neapolitans are my breed of choice. I love them, I'm obsessed with them. Um, I used to run a rare breed Mastiff Rescue, so I've rehomed a lot of Neapolitans as well. And Neapolitans, you know, they're, they're known for skin stuff. They're known for, you know, yeast issues, all types, any type of skin issues, eye issues, they're known for that. and I've been really lucky in that none of my Neapolitans have really had issues until Glaucus. Um, Glaucus is raw fed. He gets a very specific <laughs> diet that's catered to him. You know, an average day for him, he eats about six pounds of raw a day. Um, an average day for him would be something like um, maybe a lamb grind 
plus some raw green lips. All of this is going to be raw green lips muscles, a green supplement and some sort of bone broth, um, a kefir supplement of some sort, you know, plus uh, a heart or a neck. So, you know, a really big kind of, we call it Frank and prey, where it's different pieces and parts of every animal, but things that are specific that I know he likes and will really engage him. So really clean diet, still terrible skin issues. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I have kind of come up with a cocktail that is really successful for him. And you've kind of seen that. You've, you've seen him every year since he was a baby. I mean, yes. You were here for his very first birthday. <laughs> we took him into the show ring for the first yeah. time. He was the hooligan, but <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of had varying degrees, and now we're finally to the point. But you know, he also sees a veterinarian regularly for acupuncture and B vitamin injections, and you know, all sorts of things too. So I really try to support him in every possible way to help keep him healthy. Yeah, um, Briscoe is. <laughs> Briscoe is such a love bug. So Briscoe is a, he's yeah, a he bull mastiff, um, which I only found out uh, from doing a DNA test. I adopted him when I moved here and he'd been a uh, stray for probably about 18 months, never lived in a house, had terrible, terrible fear issues and um, has been a total gem. We, I used a lot of different supplements with him to help get him over the fear stuff. He was so fearful to the point where when I adopted him, we didn't realize he'd never been in a house and normal house noises or things really terrified him. Um, an ice maker turning over, he would urinate. It, it, it would scare him that bad because he just had no concept yeah. of what was happening. A ceiling fan, right? Wasn't yeah. that a big thing for him? Yeah, yeah I remember ceiling talking fans, about especially that. Especially in Atlanta, you know, most of the time if you come in and flip on a light, it's connected to a fan somewhere. Yeah. You know, and so just the fact that it would start out of the blue really terrified him. Um, bags. You remember when you used to come visit, you used to have to leave your bags outside. You yeah, couldn't leave yeah. them inside because he it, it, he would go climb in the bed or climb in the shower and stay there for hours. It scared him so yeah, bad. Yeah. So with him was I had to help him be more comfortable and calm, but I also had to support this feeling of well being. You know, he needed to yeah. feel okay in this house. This was his home, and right. it's hard because he didn't have any of that foundation. You know, so yeah. it took some training, it took some active counter conditioning and desensitization to stuff around here, but it also took a lot of support through, you know, herbs and homeopathic remedies to get him to that point. So, right. um, a little bit of so everything, but yeah, and he actually bless his heart. <laughs> <laughs> he has Cushing's. Um, he has uh, thyroid issues. He is now in kidney failure. And I know it's everything, everything. And again, wonderful holistic vet. He's getting regular acupuncture. He's getting regular holistic modalities. And we've been able to support him exclusively with herbs, exclusively. So he was diagnosed with with the kidney issues in 2017. And the traditional vet that I saw thought he had about six to nine months. He was already urinating, urinating out kidney cells in his urine. Um, and he, I mean, here's 2020, he's run around. <laughs> <laughs> My nine year old, he'll be 10 years old this year, bull mastiff who just is like, whatever, you couldn't tell him anything is wrong with him. In fact, when I take him, I. My holistic vet, who I love, is about two and a half hours away. So I take him for regular blood tests closer so we can just keep an eye on everything. Every time they see him, they cannot believe that anything's wrong with him until they run his blood tests. And then they're like, how, is how, how are you alive? <laughs> here. What is going on? So, you know, he certainly has really benefited from those. And I don't do any traditional pharmaceuticals with him. Now, I'm not saying that's the route for anybody, for everybody. But for him, that has worked exceptionally well. We've been able to- well, I think you also, you did try some medications in the beginning and they just weren't, it wasn't working, right? Honestly, Didn't you do some? Honestly, with Briscoe for the thyroid, the Cushing's and the um, kidney stuff, we never did. Okay. Um, my main veterinarian doesn't use any traditional medicine. She only uses holistic modalities. Okay. Um, and the reason I drive out to her is she's the only traditional Chinese- uh, medicine vet in the state. So um, he's actually on Chinese herbs for everything. Okay. Okay. So when we talk about supplements, just, you know, supplements in general. So just, you know, so people have an idea you're talking about 
powders or are they pills or are they sometimes herbs? What, what, what is included in uh, a definition of supplements? So supplements could be anything. They, it could be a food, you know, um, some sort of like green supplement, like a powder that you're adding, anything that basically you're supplementing to the diet, either to help specifically target an issue that you're dealing with or just for overall well-being. You know, something like a green supplement can be great for vitamin mineral content. Um, there's a lot of great companies now that make specific supplements. Um, in fact, Primal just started a whole line of frozen supplements. There's one that's uh, green, you know, ground green lip muscles. There's one, um, I can't remember what the other one is. I think it's a green supplement. There's a few different things like that. So companies are starting to realize that people want to be able to add things to their dog's diet to yeah. help, you know, make up for things that might be missing. And again, all dogs are individuals. Every dog is going to assimilate food differently based off of, you know, previous gastrointestinal health, based off genetics, based off breed. There's a lot right. of reasons, you know, that you would want to add supplements. Now, those certainly can come in any form. You certainly, I use a lot of tinctures. So tinctures are going to be liquid based, usually preserved in some sort of alcohol or vegetable glycerin. Um, uh -huh. If you can find a tincture that's in vegetable glycerin, that's really helpful because vegetable glycerin is a little bit sweet. So it's much Is that different than um, an oil? It wouldn't be in an oil? Not usually. Tinctures usually need um, some sort of preservative and oils can um, tend to go rancid. So alcohol or vegetable glycerin is usually how those are preserved. So okay. any type of those liquid supplements, um, you certainly you can have, you know, capsules, regular capsules, um, also essential oils, um, homeopathic remedies can come. We've all seen rescue remedy. I'm sure. So rescue yeah. remedy is a is a homeopathic remedy. Those can come again in liquids or they come in these little tiny pellets that you can place right into your dog's mouth too. So oh, okay. a few different available things. And those are going to be based off of what the supplement actually is. So if it's okay. an herb, you're usually going to see it in a tea, in a tincture, in, a, in that liquid or in a capsule. Okay. Are a lot of them available in different forms? Like yeah. sometimes a powder or, okay. That's yeah, good. so, you know, one of my, you know, favorite, favorite go-tos is chamomile. You know, I'm sure we're all familiar with chamomile. You've probably had chamomile tea at some point in time. Yeah. Um, there's so many benefits to dogs for chamomile and chamomile comes in any form you can think of. It comes in a tea, it comes in a, you know, an herbal capsule, it comes in a liquid supplement, it comes in a essential oil. You can even get the homeopathic version of it. So, I mean, chamomile across the board, you can find that in any form. Now, each of those forms really have different uses. Um, oh, okay. Essential oils, essential oils, have kind of gotten big over the, I mean, I've been using essential oils for 20 years and I feel like essential oils really blew up maybe 10 years or so, or so ago with yeah. the rise of the, some of the companies that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the companies that have been promoting them. Now here's the thing, essential oils are highly, highly, highly concentrated. You're usually talking about, you know, thousands of pounds of flowers to get a few drops of an essential oil. So, a lot of these companies now that are out here promoting the use of these are also promoting ingesting these oils. I never recommend ingesting an essential oil, whether it's you or your dog. You, you know, essential oils uh, are, are made specifically for different reasons and ingesting is not one of them. You know, like I said, chamomile comes in so many forms. If you want to ingest chamomile, get it, you know, get a tea. Get a yeah. um, herbal supplement. You know, there's lots yeah. of safe ways to ingest that, and you don't need that. You know, extreme concentration of chamomile right. when you're using it either. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see so many people on here. The computer actually doesn't show me how many people, but I see a lot of people saying hi and that they can hear and stuff now. So um, I'm hoping that we'll do more of these. But the the focus today was going to sort of be on calming. Um, but I wanted people to come just to hear you talk about using supplements. Um, but our focus was going to be sort of on calming and also just supporting our dogs through this difficult time that we're going on where they might be getting 
less exercise or feeling stressed out or responding to our stressed yeah. um, behavior and stuff. So what are some things that you might recommend for calming down? Because I know that over the years, I've used a lot of different things. I mean, I've tried Rescue Remedy, which we've talked about, so I don't really use that so much anymore as a go-to. But, um, you know, some of the different things, like I've used CBD, I've used uh, one was called Skull Cap. Mm -hmm. I love the... Um, the essential oils just for i usually just put a little bit on the inside of the dog's ear leather um so i really love that and i usually at my from shy to showy like you taught me i i i'll always try and get out the bottle and let the dog decide if they like Ooh. it and almost always they're like licking it and pushing into it so yeah, tell that. us some ideas of ways we can or supplements we can use to support and help with just i guess a feeling of calmness and maybe there's different things for like extreme fear and stress and then just a little bit worried or? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I, w I wanna just mention really quick cause you said you used to use Rescue Remedy and you don't so much anymore. So the biggest thing I always tell people with Rescue Remedy, I think the hardest part is there's a lot of misinformation about it. Um, it Rescue Remedy is really meant for panic. So oftentimes people use it for calming and then they're like, oh, this doesn't work. Um, it can be really, the thing I love about Rescue Remedy is, you know, there's no downside to using it. You can use it in conjunction with anything else since it's a homeopathic remedy. But I, that's the biggest thing for me to keep in mind with Rescue Remedy is we're talking, you know, extreme situations, extreme fear, extreme panic. You know, that's where you're going to see the best use of Rescue Remedy being used. So it's it's not a calmative aid. It's it's not to use in calming. So it's a great supplement, but it certainly needs to be applied correctly too. Yeah, but for for years it was like that's what they just told. Like that's all they're yeah. sort of you ever knew about. Like yeah. before, I think it got popular. There was Rescue Remedy, and at first it was just for people. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. give this to yourself and your dog. Then yeah. they came out with that one, but but it was just sort of like nobody really knew we it was just like if dogs are worried or give them this you yeah. know until yeah. you told me like well, that's not really for that you know yeah, absolutely and i think that's that's the hard part is a lot of people use supplements um and they're either not applying them correctly or they're not getting the dosage right and and then they don't think it works you know they're like well i tried holistic stuff and it didn't work you know yeah um, and there are benefits to everything, you know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to pharmaceuticals. There's a lot of client consults I go in and, you know, I'll tell them, look, I, I really think you need Clomacom. I really think you need Prozac. You know, we need to yeah. talk about getting this dog in a pharmaceutical, but there are different supplements that can really make a big difference. And the nice thing about a lot of holistic supplements is a lot of them don't have serious side effects. Now, oftentimes they do. Obviously, if you have a dog, especially if you have a dog that's already on an SSRI, has a heart condition or a thyroid condition, you should always consult your vet before you try any type of natural remedy. Um, and explain to people what an SSRI is. So that's gonna be your pharmaceuticals like Prozac, something right. that has to be loaded that's gonna help you know, with those behavioral issues. So you know, if your vet isn't comfortable with herbs or doesn't have a knowledge in them, seek out a, a holistic vet that maybe you could do a phone consult with and just say, hey, this, these are the drugs that my dog is taking and I really want to try X, Y, Z with them, you know, and get some- Or they can contact you for a consult with that. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely. why I, absolutely. I don't know if you can see it, but your, you know, there's a crawler with your website. So people, you can, <laughs> Anna does do, um, <laughs> Anna does do um, remote consults. So this is something you do not need to be in person for. I mean, she just needs to talk to you. She can put together a diet for your dog. She can, um, you know, give you some ideas of supplements you can use and different things that might be beneficial. So know that that's certainly an option. It's not just like here she is and then you'll never see her again. You can, you know, contact her to set something up. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Okay. So, you know, I think the, my biggest concern right now with dogs is everybody's schedule has changed. <laughs> yeah. It's hard for dogs, you know, especially when dogs are used to a routine. It's hard when that changes so drastically. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also really concerned about what happens when we go back to work. You know, all these right. dogs that are used to having us around and used to having us here 24 seven. I will tell you, my dogs are actually really bugs by me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I really have thrown off their game. Uh, Bristol, Can you just call them over? Are they available? Can we see yeah, them? I locked them in the bedroom because oh, you, you did? know what a brat Glaucus is. I know. <laughs> totally be like knocking shit off the table right, right. now. <laughs> if he was loose. So no, he's put up. Um, which, uh, you know, I love that he's a butthead. But um, so really, you know, promoting that feeling of well-being is going to be super, super important right now. Um, and even though, like I said, you know, my dogs are really bugged. Briscoe, who like would crawl in your skin if he could, like he just can't be close enough to you. Sometimes he sleeps with his nose pressed up against me so hard he can't breathe. Like it's, he's oh. like, and I have to move yeah. my face so he can <laughs> get air. Um, he's been sleeping on the couch. He slept on the couch for like three nights. <laughs> Briscoe? Yes. Oh. Um, Because his whole schedule is off. He doesn't like that I toss and turn at night. And, you know, especially, you know, when you have a dog who's a Velcro dog, they're, they're picking up on your stress. They're picking right. up on your anxiety and your stress. You know, a lot of us, especially small business owners, we're scrambling right now. You know, we're trying right. to figure out when we are going to be able to go back to work and how we're going to be able to make money and pay our bills and all these things. And so, right. you know, these dogs are all in tune to this, you know, they're like, yeah. Hey, what, what's happening here? And, wh and why are you home all the time? <laughs> why are you home all the time to stress me out about your problems? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, definitely promoting a feeling of well being is really important right now. I, I have a couple. Oh, sorry. That's me. Um, I have a couple supplements I I really like for that. Um, St. John's wort is one. You guys oh, are yeah. probably I'm familiar with that. Yeah. You know what's you talked about it when we had you out here to talk about this in person, you that was one of the ones that you talked about. Yeah. 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 I really like St. John's wort because it has a variety of uses. It's pretty easy. It doesn't really counteract with a lot of things, you know, and it comes in such a wide variety. A lot of times something like St. John's wort or chamomile, I'll make into a tea and then I'll pour it over the dog's food. I let it cool a little bit. I'll let it uh -huh. steep and cool and then just pour it over the dog's meal, you know? So oh, really, I like that. Yeah. A really easy way to get some extra moisture into the dog. It, you know, the, the, it'll help warm up that Food and make it a little bit yummier. So you make a tea with that. So you can get St. John's wort as an herb like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Yeah. And you can even, you know, a lot of these places that sell loose herbs. Now, the majority of supplements I give to dogs are human supplements. Um, human supplements. I know. <laughs> I know, you know. I know, you know. <laughs> um, I find a lot of the human supplements tend to be cleaner. You know, the dog supplements, oftentimes they try to mask things. The hardest part about herbs, especially any type of like liquid, if it's preserved in alcohol, it's going to have a really strong odor to it and probably a really strong taste too. So that, that can be hard. That can be hard to get into your dog, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so herbs are the most difficult for that. And a lot of times these companies that make herbal supplements for dogs, they put a lot of filler in there. They'll put liver powder in there, which is great. If those work for you and you can get them into your dog and that's the easiest way for you to do it, awesome. Uh, but That would be like in a powder, like a scoop that you scoop on and they've mixed it with flavored stuff. Sometimes or sometimes they're pressed into like a chew. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Just yeah. like a okay. little chew. But yeah, the human supplements tend to be a lot cleaner. Um, the human human supplements also go through a little bit more rigorous testing, you know, so it's really easy to find a high quality company that makes a really high quality product. And then, you know, I recommend uh, the dosage on the bottle, you know, treat it about, if you've got a 50 pound dog, half the dosage. You know, if you've got a 25 pound dog, give a quarter of the dosage, 50 pound dog, half the dosage, 75, yada, 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 up from there. So, um, you know, uh, on average, a 50 pound dog will probably take about half the dosage that's on the bottle. And then same thing, you can, if you do a capsule, you could hide it in a pill pocket and give it that way. Um, or you can make a tea and pour it over their food. A lot of times that helps mask the flavor of the herb as well, right? Mm -hmm. So... You know, the St. John's wort is nice because it definitely is is mood boosting. That's that's really the thing I, I want to help dogs with right now is that 
you know, feeling of well-being, feeling of like, oh, this is this is okay. I can deal with this, right? I'm sort of calm. Yeah, these so the mood boosting herbs don't aren't generally calmative, you know, um, but they certainly should have a little bit more of like a, a feel good <sighs> kind of. Yeah, just like yeah. A, oh, okay, not like a yeah. hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. Catherine yeah. said I bought a capsule machine and at times had to put a capsule in a capsule to hide the taste. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. Sometimes, you know, I mean, here's the thing. Obviously, dog's sense of smell is a lot stronger than ours. And yeah. a, a lot of these herbs smell terrible. They smell terrible. Like dogs are like, why would I eat that? <laughs> so yeah. um yeah, you know, sometimes it takes and obviously we've all been there where we're like giving one treat, two treats, three <laughs> treat with the herb in it, four treats, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really quickly. Um, and the other thing um, you can try to, I often use cream cheese when I'm doing capsules because, you know, with peanut butter, dogs can lick and lick and it's sticky enough. A lot of times they can pluck that pill out of it. But oh, yeah. cheese, as soon as they start licking, it gets really slippery. So uh -huh. it tends to just go down a lot easier. So often- What about butter? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, maybe even coconut oil, huh? There's like a bunch mm -hmm. of things you could do to try and um, help to get it down. So so do you think your, your sort of first choice, like just all of us, everybody who's going through this, probably us and our dogs, St. John's wort would be a good, just like, let's start with that. Yes, absolutely. I really like St. John's wort. Um, another one I really, really like is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is going to be the same thing. It's going to help promote a feeling of well-being. Um, mm -hmm. It, you know, it is readily available at any health food store. So even if you're not familiar with it, it should be really easy to find. They're just starting to do some dog supplements with it now. But ashwagandha, I think, um, it, to me, it doesn't have as herbal of a smell. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, these could also be used in conjunction with each other as well. Okay. So, or same thing, like you could do a chamomile, chamomile in a St. John's wort, you know. Um, ashwagandha is a little, because it's just not as popular, it's not as easily found in tea form or other form. I kind of really like the idea of the tea <clears throat> form. I've never done that. I've done it for the birds because there are bird companies like that's how birds drink water in the wild. It's dirty. Yeah. It's so yeah. it's got stuff in it, you know. So um there were, I think it was called Teas for Beaks, did all these different, you know, and they would oh, have different yeah. um sort of things for them. And um, but I've never done it for the dogs. But I like that idea because it would be so because I do put water over their food. So yeah. it would be cool to just like have that as just an extra thing that's just soaked into their food. Yeah, absolutely. And I do a lot of supplements that way. Um, my go-to as soon as there's any type of gastrointestinal distress is slippery elm. And slippery mm. elm is definitely best with the tea. You know, so you oh okay. Sometimes it's harder to find it in tea form, but you can even open the capsules and soak them in warm water. Slippery elm gets very viscous. It gets a nice thick texture to it when you soak it. So you know, it helps coat. That's why oftentimes sore throat teas have slippery elm in them because it'll help uh -huh. coat your throat. So um, that's one of my favorites to do as a tea. And, but yeah, any of the, you know, herbal, you could do, you know, a lavender tea, you could do a chamomile tea, any of those, you know, teas that help kind of calm are, are great to serve over food. And so could you just use regular tea like for people? Yeah. <laughs> like is it is it caffeine free tea? Does it matter? Like well, all those herbal teas are gonna be caffeine free. So, you know, a chamomile okay. tea or a lavender tea, any of those, you know, are already gonna be um caffeine free. What I okay. usually recommend is do a quarter to half of the, you know, dilute it a little bit of the full screen oh, okay. tea. So just to start, you know, see how your dog likes it, see how they acclimate to it. So make kind of a weak tea to begin with and see mm -hmm. how they respond to it. Oftentimes okay. with herbs, it's hard, you know, dogs assimilate things um, a little bit differently, but also metabolize things very quickly. You really have to play around with herbal supplements and dosage in general for your dog to find kind of what works, you know? Okay. 
So, so it's, maybe it's a good idea to keep a journal or something. So you really are sure of like write down how much Chelsea said for someone who's just starting out, are there certain things you should avoid or look for when purchasing these human grade teas for dogs use? What about dosage of St. John's wort? Yes. So um, dosage on any of these herbs, you know, I would, I would split it up in basically quarters. So for a 25 pound dog, I do a quarter of the dose, a 50 pound dog, I do half a dose, 75 pound dog, I do three fourths of the dose, a hundred pound dog, I do hundred percent of the dose. So that's the dosage on the bottle you, of these human supplements. Oh, okay. So oh, I got it. So it would be like you, you would be looking at a bottle that was made for a person and then you would use that dosage. Yes. So okay. if you bought an herbal supplement and it said, you know, two capsules was the serving and your dog is 50 pounds and you're going to give one capsule. Okay. Got and, it. You know, most of these things I oftentimes recommend if you're giving something, especially to help, uh, with gastrointestinal health or with overall mood enhancement that you feed it on an empty stomach. Now, oh. I would start with giving it with food just to make sure that, you know, there's no issues, see how your dog acclimates to it. And then I would work it away from the meal as your dog seems to, to tolerate it and is okay with it. Because dogs are carnivores and they have this, you know, really short digestive tract, it, they have a very limited amount of time that they can actually assimilate and pull, you know, especially plant-based, any type of herbs and things, their lower intestine and colon are really, really short. You know, they're meant to consume raw meat among other things. So they got to get raw meat can't sit in your gut. <laughs> That's how bacteria <laughs> takes hold. So, you know, any of us who've had a puppy, we know when do you take your puppy out to go potty? right after you feed them <laughs> because they're going to go really soon. <laughs> um, and humans are just a little bit different. We have these nice, long, winding gastrointestinal tracts. <laughs> so um, to get the most bang for your buck, especially, you know, if you're feeding, especially a probiotic, a probiotic should always be given opposite food. And it's regardless of how you're giving it. If you're giving oh. a powder, if you're giving a liquid, you know, some sort of... <laughs> And you know, a lot of these probiotics nowadays um, are kind of sold that way that you pour it over food. But honestly, a dog's gastrointestinal tract has such a short, limited amount of time to try and assimilate so many things. You know, it's trying to pull vitamins and minerals from food, it's trying to pull all this nutrition. It, like I said, to get the most bang for your buck. Feeding things opposite food, you know, is is going to give you the the best benefit of that specific supplement. Could so. you, like, for you know, I'm giving Opie that calming care probiotic. <laughs> um, do you? And I do put it on his food because I didn't know that. So I'm think now it's like my head's going, and I'm thinking, what if I just mix that with a little water and just let him lap that up? He'll eat anything, so you know, he'll, he'll be happy. To have it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like in between meals, that would be a good way to, to get that delivered to him? Yes. What I recommend okay. is at least 40 minutes opposite a meal before or after. Okay. So it can be any time. Okay. It can be two or four hours later. But, you know, give that system a little bit of a rest before you, especially probiotics. I never give probiotics with food because I want those to get in there. And I also, you know, things like L-theanine. You know, I don't know how familiar you are with L-theanine. But again, yeah. L-theanine is, you know, mood enhancing, it, it helps the endocrine system recover from stressful events, you know, anything like that, I want to get into the dog on an empty stomach. Okay. I want to okay. get so, out of it. And so is that digestive enzymes as well? Digestive enzymes should always be given with food because that's what okay. you're here to help with. You want to help okay. break down the food. So absolutely, you know, any type of herbal supplement, you could give it in a, in a pill pocket, you could give it in a little bit of cream cheese or butter, you could give it um, like you said, in a little bit of water, if the dog will drink it up that way, lap it up that way. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, I use just a little bit of yogurt to get it into oh, the okay. So just, it can be in some food, just not a whole meal, right? Mm -hmm. We're just trying yeah. to get some sort of vessel down into the GI tract to deliver it. Right. There. Well, luckily with the dachshunds, they'll, you could hand them like pills <laughs> and they'll eat them. They don't, they're not like worried about that. I like my who is like, why, are, why aren't you eating this? Why are you giving <laughs> this to me? 
after yeah, exactly. you, know, you don't want it. <laughs> yeah, so you have it first. Okay, so St. John's Wort is is one of the ones you said you loved. And then say that other one again and you might have to spell it. Ashwagandha. So ashwagandha, so, uh, yeah. Look at me getting out a pen. I'm gonna see if I can just write that. Do you, Do you know how to spell it? Spelling bee time, did you? <laughs> um, oh, Bobby said, thanks on the calming care. Good, because I think she was talking about having tried that too. Okay, so those ones are are really good. What do you think about um, uh, things that are sort of put into the air, like like a diffuser for, for uh, essential oils or like pheromones and those diffusers? Do you think there's any benefit to those? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the big thing with any type of pheromone diffuser is it re, your dog really has to be in close proximity for it to be successful. So oftentimes mm. people will plug it into the wall in their you know nine hundred square foot living room and they're like, this doesn't work at all. And I'm like, yeah, because it's it's working this much around the outlet right now. <laughs> You're not clear over there. So um, oftentimes what I recommend with those things, if you have a dog that will tolerate something like a bandana is do the spray, spray oh, on okay. the bandana, let the bandana needs to be dry. So just make sure it's dry before you put it back on the dog. Um, but then you can put it on the dog and let the dog wear it. You could also plug in a diffuser next to a crate, you know, so if the dog, oh, that's a good idea. In, next to the diffuser, then then that can also be successful. But certainly, you know, any of those pheromone things, the dog just has to be in close proximity to it. That's the hardest part. Now, you can also do that with essential oils. You could do the bandana trick with an essential oil. Essential oils always need to be diluted when we use them with our pets. So you can use what they call a carrier oil, and a carrier oil is just gonna be something that you can blend with the essential oil. Since the essential right. oil is an oil, it needs to blend with another oil. You can't blend it with water, right, to use it in that manner. So um, essential oils, there, I mean, sunflower oil, there's, I mean, a ton of different oils out there. Coconut oil, you know, if you have something on hand at the house, pretty much any oil will work. Um, but, you know, using just a couple drops in some, a carrier oil like that, and then same thing, you could put that on the, um, bandana or a drop or two, you know, I would just start with one drop on the bandana, let it dry, make sure the essential oil. Yeah. Diluted. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, see how, how your dog reacts to it. I'm actually a really big advocate of doing this on thunder shirts. I always oh, spray my nice. thunder shirts and essential oils because I think that's a great way to keep it really close to the dog. You know, so we're kind of keeping that, those olfactory senses kind of engaged with that too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, essential oils certainly can be diffused into the air. Here's the thing with essential oils. Um, quality is of the utmost importance. If you find an essential oil at, honestly, even a health food store, it's not, it's not going to be a good oil. Um, and no offense. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> it's not oil from the two big MLM companies. Um, you know, those there there are certain oils from those companies that are really, really good quality. But anytime you purchase from an ML, MLM, um, you're you're not getting the most bang for your buck. So you're you're paying a really top dollar price for an oil that's certainly not fulfilling that top dollar price point. So mm -hmm. there are a couple different companies I recommend. Um, Nature's gift. I don't get any kickbacks from these either. These people have no idea. I recommend them. Just FYI. <laughs> I'm not promoting any of these. Um, but there is a company called Nature's Gift that I really love. Um, they're based out of Alabama. And I feel I have a million different essential oils from a million different companies. Um, Nature's Gift to me always, their um, the quality of their oils, I feel like, really matches or exceeds their price points. I feel like their price points are very fair for the quality of oil you're getting. So there's okay. a lot of concern about safety issues with essential oils, and that's totally valid. Um, as I mentioned before, essential oils should never be ingested ever, regardless of the quality or where it came from. But if you're going to diffuse them or you're going to use them on your dog, it's really important that the quality is there. So Nature's Gift is a good company. Still Point Aromatics is phenomenal, phenomenal oil company, really good quality. You know, anytime, whether it's essential oils or supplements, we want to see companies that are, you know, 
committed to their process, can explain their process. Organic tends to be better. You know, we're dealing in plant matter. So we want to make sure that we're getting really clean um, supplements and herbs and flowers that are going into all these teas and tinctures and, and essential right. oils. So, you know, that's kind of what we want to look for. These um, Let me interrupt you just because Judith asked, and this is kind of what you were talking about. She said, have you noticed any difference between organic or conventional teas products? Do they both work about the same? I typically go organic, but curious if there is a difference effectiveness wise. Especially with pets, since they tend to be more sensitive to pesticides and things, I always go organic, always okay. organic. Um, and, and I really, you know, I try to buy especially supplements from companies that, that I trust and that, like I said, are really um, transparent in their processes. You know, can you go to their website? Can they explain where they get their products from, how long they've been doing it, how they process them? You know, do they have all that information available? Because if they're transparent right. with that, you know, you're going to have probably a much better quality product. And the hard part with all these is, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, it is one of those things where you get what you pay for. You know, if you're yeah. um, essential, a really good ex essential oil is going to be really expensive, you know, especially based on the rarity or how hard it is to harvest that plant. So now the nice thing with with especially with dogs is we need very little of any of these things, you know, um, herbs, teas, essential oils, you're going to be using such a small amount that you should get a lot of uses out of it for, for the dollar amount. So let me ask you this. Um, we talked about the fact that you do consult. So your website's uh, streaming along the bottom, happyhealthypup.com. So do you, I know that if somebody called you and did a consult, you would probably help them put together a recipe for an oil. Yeah. Absolutely. If they needed that, because there's so many, you don't know what to buy. Yeah. You know, there's, so you, you could help somebody put together just like a protocol, whether it's for this or even if it's for something else. I mean, she does all things nutrition. So if you guys have, you know, like the dog is throwing up or, you know, I mean, not not sick, but like, you know, you have ongoing stuff that could benefit from this in some way, uh, they can contact you for that. Now, do you make, if somebody says, look, I don't have the oils, but, you know, I just want you to make me some. Do you do that? Will you make a bottle for someone um, if you're working with them? Or, you know, I, no. I used to. Um, I just don't keep the supplies on hand uh, anymore. It's just time. Although I have plenty of time now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, something like uh, Nature's Gift or some of these other ones, I have different um like blends that i recommend and i can tell you hey Perfect. this blend is good for calming and every oil that's in it is safe for your dog Perfect. so there's not really if you're like i said if you're getting a really good quality oil there isn't a lot of oils you need to worry about rosemary is there's two oils i always mm, proceed with caution rosemary um Again, quality is really important and really good quality rosemary. We haven't seen any issues, but um, there is um, some information that can trigger seizures in dogs with epilepsy. And same thing with tea tree. Tea tree is one of those oils where, you know, if, if you find, <laughs> sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, I found essential oils at TJ Maxx. And I'm like, <laughs> you want to use with your dogs. I don't care. Fill your bathtub or something. But don't use them with your dogs. So, um, you know, like I said, unfortunately, it is one of those. I've actually that. been with you at TJ Maxx. What's that? Found, I've been with you at TJ Maxx when you found oils there. <laughs> and you're on the oil road, just like, look <laughs> what is this? And that's the hard part is, you know, it's very tempting, especially when there you have something that is so expensive. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, a one of my favorite, favorite oils is neroli. That's my favorite scent, like in the whole, whole, whole world. And, you know, a, a little tiny bottle of this, a pure neroli is going to probably cost you about $250, you know, like it's insane. Now, a brand. Most be like that. And you guys no, can get us. No, things. no. And honestly, you can get a really good, you know, I, one of my go-tos for calming is a lavender oil. With, and there's a bunch of variety of lavenders, any of them. Um, a lavender oil with some sort of citrus. 
a green mandarin, mm. an orange, you know, something uh, citrusy. It, it, it's so uplifting. Citrus oils tend to be very uplifting and mood enhancing, mood boosting. Um, and, and then you have the calming of the lavender too. It can be such a soothing blend. A citrus oil and a lavender oil, cheap, super, super cheap. So that's yeah. a really easy kind of go-to blend. That's my go-to blend for my dog room. The dogs that stay with me, you know, I diffuse essential oils in there. I play calming music for them, you know, so that's kind of my go-to for the dogs that stay with me. Cause it's so that's simple good. and it's so cheap. But yeah, there's a lot of different blends out there from different companies that are totally dog safe that you could use with dogs as well. Perfect. So any, um any last words or uh, last little bits of advice you want to give people? You know, don't be afraid. <laughs> you don't have to jump in with both feet and you, you don't have to meet me on the edge of the cliff like yeah. I mentioned before. But there are so many supplements out there that can really make a huge difference um, that are really easy to give, really cheap to get. And like I said, my biggest thing, my thing is always quality of life, you know. I I am very empathetic to dogs that are under stress. That really, really upsets me when I can see that a dog is, is not okay with this situation or really stressed out by a situation, especially because we have so many ways that we can help them, you know? Right. So don't be afraid to, to try some different things and just see there are very few supplements out there that are gonna have any sort of, you know, negative side effect. A lot of these things, they're either gonna work or they're not. You know, and yeah. if they don't work, okay, you know, we can move on to something else. But yeah. um, there's so many things available that it's it's really, really easy to try something new. Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody. Anna Bettina, happyhealthypup.com. She does consults uh, remotely like this. Maybe we'll have her on again and talk about uh, some more supplements or for a different cause or food or something. But this was great. Thank you all for coming. And um, I will be saving this talk on our Facebook page. Oh, wait. Judith Porter said for CBD, do you think there's a big difference between CBD from hemp versus from flour? You know, the hardest part about CBD right now is because it's still so new, everything is anecdotal. So, you know, we don't have a lot of studies out there from things. CBD is another one of those things where, you know, I always tell people a good CBD is going to, is it's going to cost you a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, personally, yeah, I, um, I usually do flower derived CBDs. Um, but I think the the biggest difference in them is how they interact with your dog, you know? So mm -hmm. the hardest part with CBD is because of the cost involved, it's hard to kind of play with that. You know, it's kind of hard to just try this and see if it, you know, sticks or try this and see if it sticks. So um, in that case, especially something like a CBD oil, um, because of the investment in it, I always recommend going someplace that you can get support from. So if you have a holistic vet, talk to your holistic vet about what they carry, right? I like people to have read, readily access to that. So a lot of the um, boutique pet stores now carry those. They'll have pamphlets of information or call the company, you know, the company yeah. that makes it and talk to them and, and see if they can help you pinpoint their, their exact product that is good for your exact dog. You know, and then you yeah, have I know. I think it's um support. You. I think it's called Vet CBD. There is yeah. one company at, that I don't know. I think they must be in California. They were at the dispensary one day, but they actually um do encourage you to call them and talk to the vets that have developed it, so that yeah. you can get really specific information, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, that they have that. It's not just like here you go, you're on your own. Just yeah. give them some drops. And well, see. and that's the hardest part with CBD too, because of how it's derived and because there's it's available in so many different forms. You can specifically use them for different things, you know. So I do think it, that's why I said I think it's really important to have contact with someone who who knows that brand and all the different formulations and and can help you with it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for watching. And we'll, um, 
I don't know who it's going to be next week, but I'm going to have another interview. We're going to be doing a little bit more of this. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.